Hatch gives you a lot of options for working with design colors. In another video, I covered how to change design colors and map your design to a different thread line. I'm Linda Goodall, and in this video, I'll show you how to optimize colors. In a professionally digitized design, if there are repeated colors, there's usually a good reason for it. However, when we as embroiderers start combining multiple designs for stitching, we can often end up with an excessive number of repeated colors. Let me show you what I mean. Well, this seashell does have one repeated color, and you can see it here, color 5 and color 5. It's necessary due to the layering of the stitch objects. But suppose you have multiple copies of this design. I'll group the shell, control A, control G, and that will group it so it's one piece and I won't accidentally leave a piece behind when I copy it. And now what I'm going to do is I'll slide over tad. I'm going to hold down the right mouse button and then click and drag. And that makes a clone of the design. So now I have two of them. Ultimately, I want four seashells for my project. But I want to show you a little trick I do a lot. If we look at our design colors, which we can see over here, we can see that here's shell one, and down here at the bottom is shell two. And now we have duplicates of all of our colors. This can mean a lot of time changing threads, especially on a single needle machine. Now Hatch gives us the ability to optimize the colors by combining repeated colors to reduce the number of colors we have. You might have heard this referred to as color sorting, and it applies to the entire design. It's not always a smart thing to optimize the entire design, and for this particular one, I think I could optimize pairs of shells to reduce the thread changes without affecting stitch registration. In fact, depending on what we're sewing on, we could probably do all four of them, but let's just do two so I can show you my trick. So I'm going to go to Customize Design, and at the bottom we have Optimize Color Changes. And I'll just click that. I don't have to select anything. It's going to apply it to the whole design. And we get a dialog box, and it says, this operation will reduce the number of color changes from 11 to 5. Do you want to continue? And I'm going to say yes. And now here we have our designs, and you can see that each little cell here has two colors in it. The first seashell, then the second seashell. We still have two oranges. So yes, we have five colors, but we have six changes. So now we have the same number of colors and changes that our original design had. Also notice down here on the, on the design colors bar, we still only have five swatches. Because this only shows the unique colors in the design, this shows us how they're going to stitch. So earlier I said I wanted four seashells. Now I'll just clone my first pair. So I'm going to reduce my screen a bit by just pressing the minus key a couple times. I'm going to right click and drag on my selection. Now I have four seashells. Now we have two sets of color optimized designs. So now we have twice as many colors as our original design. But I would rather spend time doing a few extra thread changes than to risk a registration problem. By that I mean the stitches don't connect properly. Now that's not a hatch problem. That is a sewing problem. We always experience distortions when we sew. And by optimizing this way, I make sure that I'm not moving the design too much in the hoop and doing too much stitching before I come back to thinner details. Even so, I've still improved the efficiency of the design. And as long as I hoop and stabilize well, I haven't impacted the registration for stitching. So like any power tool, you need to understand not only how it's used, but what will happen when it's misused. Color sorting an entire design, especially a really large one, a really stitch intensive one with many repeated colors, many small objects scattered all around, running stitch outlines, that's not very smart because that's where we're going to run into registration problems. So by optimizing by sections like this, you can avoid those kind of problems. I'm using Digitizer here, and there are some other tools for optimizing that aren't one-click options like this one, but can still improve the sewing efficiency with a little finer controls. We'll look at them in another video, but as a sneak peek, they're right down here.